Welcome to the Higher Ed Happy Hour podcast, brought to you by Unincorporated, a higher education agency committed to building awareness and growing enrollment for universities. This podcast provides deans, senior admin, and faculty with the tools, resources, and information they need to grow student interest, design branded content, and launch new programs and courses. Let's jump into today's episode. Hey, everyone, and welcome to this episode of the Higher Ed Happy Hour podcast. My name is Robert. I'm a part of the UN team, and I'm joined today by Ian and Mackenzie. You know, we've been thinking a lot about um, how the pandemic has impacted the higher ed industry and specifically how faculty and staff have really rise to the occasion to meet the challenges faced over the past year. Um, And with that, I'll kick it over to Ian to get the conversation started. Thanks, Robert. It's great to be on set here with you and uh, sharing this point of view. I think with this discussion, the listeners may find themselves taking an opportunity to ask, how can I apply faculty empathy or how can I consider the faculty now that I have this perspective? And you know, whether you work in career services, recruitment, curriculum design, maybe you're part of the dean's cabinet, whatever your role is at a university or college, Maybe after hearing this, you might consider the faculty's role in all this and the the faculty's perspective. 2020, indeed, was a year that virtually everyone wanted to forget, whether you're in higher ed or not. And certainly, you know, on campus and off campus, this is certainly true uh, across the board. There were unprecedented levels of uncertainty, confusion, disruption, quite overwhelming to say the least, you know, ever, ever since that first day of going home to now 16 months later, and, you know, still being confronted with a, with a lot of the fallout, it's taken, uh, taken a while to adjust and to overcome those challenges. But, you know, we, what did we see? We saw campus closures, uh, abrupt transitions. We were forced into an online or hybrid instruction format. There was testing and tracing that we were responsible for in order to ensure the health of students and faculty. Uh, Many calls, additional calls or pressure put on senior administration to justify the value of of higher education from a from a branding standpoint or from an agency that supports higher ed. You know, we we're still wrestling with that. How do we message or communicate the value of higher ed? And there are still waves of critical challenges and concerns that continue to roll ashore. But through all this, all the outcomes achieved and the failures that we suffered, which ranged widely across the board, faculty, they were the ones that stood in and really worked to ensure that the quality of the education that was expected was the quality of the education that was delivered amidst all the uncertainty, confusion, and disruption. And now, as we're seeing the, you know, the ending of, of spring session 2021, we're seeing that higher education continues to be challenged, disrupted, unbundled, some are saying. Uh, there's, there's even greater scrutiny for the decisions and the plan and the path forward. But despite all that, despite the effort, despite the sense of, of overcoming these challenges, we're actually still not truly satisfied. You know, where no one, I would say, Robert, you know, no one's really feeling good about the way that things turned out. And there's, there's still blame, you know, running rampant. Yeah. I mean, uh, anytime there's a crisis, there's going to be blame. People are quick to try and point out who's at fault, whether it's someone or something. This is inevitable. Um, and the blame began months ago. And there's plenty to go around. University leadership, the trustees, the governing bodies, They've all been called out, rightly so in many cases and wrongly in others. But many believe that the strategic, the fiscal, and the operational mishaps, and and some would even say that it's mismanagement. What could have been done better, what should have been done better, these are all important discussions that we need to have, but these aren't the only conversations that need to take place. You know, as we look beyond the past year, hoping to do better in the next, it's important that we recognize those who stepped up in a big way in 2020. The steadfast contributors whose commitment and dedication to the core principles of higher education 
They've largely been overlooked during all of this. And of course, I'm talking about the faculty and staff who support the students that we all serve. Yeah, well said, Robert. And my takeaway from that is if appreciation is in short supply and if the blame game, if blame is running rampant, then one thing we can all do, all of us who serve higher ed or work within higher ed, we can start by recognizing at least that, you know, right up front that there's a huge amount of responsibility and blame that we've placed into a single bucket, that single bucket called higher ed. But it's certainly more complicated than that. We can't just point our finger at the institution and say it's broken. It wasn't handled well. And not only senior administration, but faculty, staff, they're all to blame. They're, they all exist within this bucket. So let's recognize that right up front. And while senior administrators continue to make those critical decisions, as we see faculty and staff who are consistently being called to implement within the classroom and implement or execute against those decisions, that maybe a second step after we recognize it is let's have faculty play a more significant role. Let's let's give them a little input in actually creating what that educational experience looks like moving forward. So Mackenzie, as you know, part-time faculty, and I have a bit, little bit of a perspective on this, none of the faculty groups and members that I talked to mentioned that they had any say in these decisions. So let's recognize right up front that there isn't a single source to cast blame. And if there is one group that we could call upon who have endured the struggle and risen to the challenge, it's one group that can help implement what this looks like moving forward would be the faculty and staff. Why? Well, as we've covered, faculty have stepped up enormously. They deserve, you know, if they're going to encumber the burden, they also deserve the lion's share of credit. They've consistently delivered at the highest level of education that's possible under these extremely difficult and rare circumstances. And now that fall has closed and spring 2021 is about to close, I think it is really important to recognize what they've been through, recognize that they're really burnt out, they need a rest. And as I mentioned, they should have a larger say in how fall 2021, spring 2022, and beyond how that will be handled. Yeah, I mean, the first step in all of this is to listen, especially to the people who are impacted the most. And so in an effort to do that, we crowdsource some direct input from faculty, staff, and students um, through higher education-specific social channels. And over the past month, we're able to you know, get a good look at how many of them have been going above and beyond, despite the tremendous upheaval that they faced this past year. And as we were looking at these uh, pieces of feedback, there were a few themes that emerged. And what stood out most to us is just how much happens between the faculty and the staff and their laptop screens of students as they try to learn remotely and uh, you know, whether they're at home or still in the town of their college, the efforts that many in higher ed might not see, let alone appreciate. So if there's one thing that resonates above all the others, it would be that the educators, the staff, and the support level administrators have made infinitely more sacrifices than uh, we may know about to ensure that the quality education was delivered to these students. So with that, I just wanted to kick it over to Ian to share some of the, the quotes and some of the things we've heard specifically from these faculty and staff. So we we've, have felt this way about faculty for many years. <laughs> we're, we're definitely an agency that believes in faculty, believes in the role that faculty plays when it comes to the brand equity or the value that's perceived and promised uh, within universities and colleges. But us believing that wasn't enough. As, as Robert just mentioned, we needed to go out and poll our trusted network of faculty across a number of different universities on exactly their point of view and, and, and really apply some of their thinking, their experiences uh, directly to our research, if you will. Uh, one theme that came out was extraordinary personal sacrifice. And within that one of the things we heard explicitly was faculty saying, we did everything we could to ensure that students were in a safe environment conducive to learning. 
One even said that we housed and fed stranded students during the summer. They enlisted virtually every stakeholder involved. That included alumni, donors, staff, faculty, and parents to contribute to this cause. And some even welcomed students into their homes. I couldn't imagine that. Faculty member tasked with making a quick adjustment, major pivot into an online environment who is also responsible for housing and helping feed stranded students. This faculty member went on to say that they transformed their entire internship system almost overnight to a virtual internship system as well. So yeah, faculty and staff, I mean, the the underlying point here is they've been making personal sacrifices to ensure that the students have been cared for, that they felt supported during the pandemic, and that the efforts of the university to support this group of staff and this group of faculty across the entire U.S., to me, speaks volumes to the commitment that these individuals have. Yeah, and another faculty member pointed out that for a trans student whose transition treatments were interrupted because their mom has cancer and everyone was staying home trying to avoid bringing home the virus, they offered to complete their exams as oral exams, which allowed them to continue learning and pass the class. Another said, we started every class with a check-in to see how students were doing. We talked about isolation, fear for loved ones, why some communities were being harder hit, election stress, the fraught nature of decisions made, worries about job prospects, etc. And while campus was closed, they even delivered groceries and staples to high-need international students who were living off campus. Yeah, so these stories, these quotes, these reflections... From faculty. I mean, they they were pouring in. Uh, Another example of going above and beyond, both personally and professionally, comes from a faculty member at another college. She mentions In May, I had a student reach out to me about the crisis. They said that they were in crisis. And it turned out that her home was not a safe environment. And in the past, residential life, it's a campus group. They made exceptions for her to stay on campus when others typically wouldn't be. But when our campus shut down, she was forced to return home. And the student called me from her car crying after an incident with her parent and that she had grandparents she could go to but was afraid to because they were also high risk. And so my colleagues and I, we scrambled to find shelter information and connected her with the support in her hometown. I mean, this, this is an exemplar of faculty going above and beyond, both personally and professionally. Quote, for many students, the campus is where they are safe. And that safety, in addition to the education, that safety was jeopardized when all students were forced to return home without any time to plan. And we did everything we could to ensure that students were in a safe environment conducive to learning. Yeah. And a lot of times there was many pivots in this entire process. Sometimes faculty and administrative support staff had to figure out new ways to ensure students were informed, cared for, and supported on an institutional level, even if the solutions required time-intensive processes with decisions being made on the fly in some cases, because waiting simply wasn't an option. There's one quote that says, our HR call center team stepped up to become our primary COVID-19 response call center, fielding thousands of calls and emails, mainly from parents and students. This allowed our frontline staff and student affairs, student health, housing, and other areas to focus on their specific responsibilities, which were critical to putting into effect the changes that needed to be implemented on the ground. So here you have an HR call center uh, taking on a new role to become a COVID-19 response call center. I guarantee you that wasn't in their job description. (laughs) Wild. Another quote here says, our academic advisors deserve much more recognition than they've received for their willingness to serve as advisors and counselors beyond mere academic recommendations. Underpaid and overworked, they have served as the frontline source of support for students nonstop, shepherding them through total chaos without pause or any expectation of praise or reward. That's right. That's right. I mean, just hearing those quotes again and putting myself in that space 
could really feel the sense that extraordinary personal sacrifice was made by the faculty and staff, as well as doing whatever, <laughs> absolutely whatever was necessary in order to continue the highest level and provide the highest level of education. The last two themes that we uncovered uh, in this work and, and developing this research was extra work for no extra pay. And Mackenzie, you're here with us today to, to share a little bit of that insight and speak to that theme that we also saw. Yeah, Ian, thank you. So one of the things I found, one of the quotes that we received when researching this topic of extra work and no extra pay, um, quote, I feel we need to acknowledge adjuncts who worked all summer long to create new class materials for online classes, but were not paid for that work. And this was a theme throughout many of the quotes that we received. Um, another quote read, Faculty at our college were tasked with transitioning face-to-face -face classes into online classes with no notice, no training, and an unwieldy LMS for online education without complaint, without demands, and without putting an undue burden on students. So we see the sacrifice here in a new light because it's lacking compensation for the personal sacrifices that they were making. One final quote that we had on this topic is a colleague and I created remote learning study skills videos for students to help them acquire strategies for succeeding in a remote classroom environment. We did this on our own time because we felt students really needed it and couldn't find anything out there that made any sense. And this was also um, a subtopic that we found is professors specifically stepping up to help their students learn online and digital platforms that they would be using going forward. I saw one example of a professor that was offering extra credit to students if they went through online learning modules to better learn the LMS platform. That's awesome. That's good feedback. And this is something that we're seeing even in our work um, universities approaching us saying, hey, we need help transitioning to an online environment. Uh, what can we do? What can, how can you help us? And to your point about extra work without the extra pay, faculty and staff aren't the most well compensated positions in higher ed to begin with, far from it even. And yet countless employees worked overtime day in, day out to ensure that the semester was all it could be for their students. They neither asked for and quite frankly, weren't even offered extra pay. They just did what it took to get the job done and get it done well. You know, this leads to the final theme here, which is all this extra work led to fatigue, stress, and even burnout. And, you know, we're still kind of in it and we're heading into a new school year. And so you can imagine how that continues to build and compound interest that comes on stress and burnout that isn't addressed uh, one quote we heard said, it's our job to get students to learn. And when our students are stressed from other things like social isolation or living at home that interfere with their learning, we're also stressed. Yeah. Yeah. So they've, they've stepped up. They've risen to the challenge. They've met the call. But all of this has led to faculty burnout. There's the mental health challenges that are now in some cases um, being addressed and, and, you know, a lot of staff and, and admin are, are speaking up about the stress and the burnout that they're experiencing and how that impacts their mental health. Another quote came through that said, you know, one major factor is compassion fatigue. And that has everything to do with educators having to carry the weight of student stress. Students have been depending on educators to provide help and advice, as well as make the right decisions regarding COVID-19. Educators hurt when their students are hurting, and the stress of faculty is deeply linked to the stress of students. Again, I, I just relate or speculate on my own experience and knowing that every class <laughs> I'm starting with a group of students who do look to me and look to their other educators and their other mentor, faculty mentors, as you know, a, a trusted place that they can go to for help and advice, but that does put additional stress on those educators. And of course we wanna step up, of course we wanna help because, I love this quote, because we do hurt when our students are also hurting. 
So now as we as we look to close out the episode, we want to end on a on an upswing, if you will, end on on a good note that all is not lost. We've hit these various themes of of how you know faculty and staff were impacted, but all is not lost. Students are speaking up and they are sharing the love. The the good news is to to really see and and feel how appreciative many of the students are for these extraordinary times and the extraordinary effort that faculty have made in order to help the entire person, you know, not just the academic learning side of the struggling students, but uh, to that last quote, also the mental and health side of these struggling students. And so while those examples can be found across the country, there's actually one group, uh, one group of students who recently found a perfect way. And I know, Robert, you, uh, you spent some time looking at this, but there were a group of students who found their way onto the NBC Today show to show their gratitude and appreciation for their professor. Yeah, that's right. So there was a group of students from the College of New Jersey, and this was featured on the Today Show. It's been shared all over social media, so you might have seen it. But there was a statistics professor named Adam Schrager who logged on to Zoom to teach his class only to find that all of his students had turned off their video function. All the squares were black when typically 90% of the students joined via video. And logging in and seeing no faces, it was all very strange, he said. All I could think was that my internet was slow or something. And then, in unison, each square turned on to reveal his students holding up signs of gratitude for his dedication. Some merely read thank you, while others featured creative references to the statistics lessons they had learned, such as, you are in the 99th percentile of my all-time favorite professors. As their cameras clicked on and I started to read the signs, he said, I was overcome and truly moved, even a bit teary. It was incredible and sweet. One of Schrager's students captured the moment on camera and shared it on TikTok. And as of a few days ago, it's been viewed more than 6 million times. And so as we wrap up this discussion, Mac, I just wanted to quickly ask, you have any final thoughts? Yeah, I think it just serves as a fitting reminder for us all that sometimes, especially during the pandemic, Hard work is not only recognized, but also pays off in the long run. That's awesome. Well, thanks, Mac. Thanks, Ian, for the discussion. And thank you for listening. Be sure to tune in for the next episode of the Higher Ed Happy Hour podcast. Thanks for listening to the Higher Ed Happy Hour podcast. For more higher ed specific resources, or if you'd like to be a guest on the show, please visit unincorporated.com. 